Welcome guys, Dieter here from Beer Idiots. Um, I took the effort to put on a mic, so I hope the audio is way better than last time. So we're continuing with uh, interviewing some uh, interesting people that work in the beer sector or have something to do with beer, and uh, I always wanted to do this. Um, I started to know him when he was a bartender at the local rock bar then he worked everywhere and he knows a lot a lot about beer and now he also has his own uh, beer company where he does trainings and pairings welcome dylan Thank you. how is it there Thank you in antwerp very lonely because we're all uh, damned to stay at home at the moment but there's enough beer as you can see so <laughs> we've got that covered at least how are you doing yeah okay okay it's in uh in brussels everything is still well i can work from home and stuff um it's quite okay but it's quite boring eh? i managed to go just before the lockdown towards the kainee in Esse, and i bought myself a nice supply of beers so i'm quite good settled We're going to kick off with the first topic, eh? Um, so, um, serious about beer, the Facebook page that I'm showing you guys right now here. I also will pull a link on the uh, here so that you guys know where it is. There you go. Serious about beer. So, Dylan, tell us a bit. Uh, what is it? What is it? So, it's a bit difficult to explain in, in a few sentences, but basically I had the idea to start with Cities About Beer uh, when I did my education about beer, uh, which I did through Cicerone and BJCP. Um, and I found that nothing in Belgium is truly alike. You have Zitologie, which is a nice basic education, but you don't have anything beyond it. So you immediately need to go to a foreign country uh, and you need to study by yourself. Both BJCP and Cicerone are self-study um, certificates you can get, but there's nobody really teaching those stuff. And I came up with the idea like, let's do it. Let's make something that's easy to follow for everybody. So start at the very base if necessary, but also that can go deep enough for like even zetologists to learn something new. Um, and I want to do that in every aspect of beer, so beer history, beer styles, off flavors, serving beer, keeping beer. Uh, as you can see, I have a bit of a beer keeping myself. Um, yes, yes. <laughs> brewing beer, I think we do have good education in Belgium, so I don't really cover that as much. Of course, I do know the basics, so when people book me for a, a beer course about brewing, then yeah, I can give the basic information, obviously. Um, apart from that even, I also give um, information to restaurants and bars. Um, I can train staff if they want to. I can look at their menu and improve it if they want to. So yeah, everything that's got to do with beer, quality, knowledge, that's it is about beer. Cool, cool. Um, I once did uh, one of your off flavor tastings, um, which was one of the more, uh, I consider, academic <laughs> tastings. Um, you put a lot of work in uh, the brochures and the, the information. How does that come together? Is that years of experience? You attract other people in that or how do you um, make that content? Apart from one booklet, which I made together with a, at the time colleague, uh, who is also a journalist and he wrote a booklet for that specific tasting, I wrote every booklet myself. Um, it's indeed a lot of experience, but also I do a lot of research before making a booklet like that. The basic idea is that tastings should be fun. So education should be fun. It shouldn't be going to school. You've definitely been to one of the more theoretical tastings with not the best beers to drink. I'm sorry for that again. Um, but it does have to be fun. So all the big information, all the details, all the numbers, you have to look at them in a booklet when you're home. Uh, you can look them up. You don't need to write anything down. You don't need to study at a workshop of Cities About Beer. You need to have fun. Um, definitely, there is a lot of information to tell. So the booklet seemed like a nice way to get the information to the people without boring them out. And we can just have a good time, drink some beers, enjoy some information, enjoy some stories about the beers we're drinking, stuff like that. So I try to keep it as, as fun and pleasant as possible. Uh, even though that 
beer tastings like the off flavor course are not the most fun to do. <laughs> All right, question uh, to go a little bit back. Um, how did you start it with beer? Because you're quite, uh, in my eyes, a legend in the Belgian beer scene. You are <laughs> quite big on the, the review apps, uh, the scene. You work also at uh, the very famous Beer Lovers Bar in Antwerp. How did you start it from, did you start it as bartender or did you know this is my passion, this is what I want to do? How do you come from your starting point un until where you are now? It's, of course, like everything, a combination of factors. Um, as a very young kid, I already knew about passion for beer. Um, my dad ran a beer bar in Bruges, um, and also famous beer bar at the time. Uh, but I didn't see my dad as much. So I knew about the concept of loving beer. Uh, I just didn't drink alcoholic beer at the time. And when I finally started to drink alcoholic beer, um, the first stuff I drank, same as everybody in Belgium, Schippeler, Stella, Palm Duvel, and I wasn't really that much of a fan of it, to be honest. I just drank it because everybody did, and I had to belong, so I drank along. Um, and then I started working as a bartender, also through circumstances, and I truly believe that every bartender knew all his beers, and knew all his products. I really thought at the time that every bartender did that. So I started drinking every beer that we sold at the bar, which was only about 20, 25 beers, but it did create something inside of me, like a thirst for, you know, new beers. So when I moved to Antwerp, um, I discovered a, a beer place that stores 200, 300, I don't even know, kinds of beer. And I just went all out and bought a bottle of each. And in between those bottles was one beer that really, you know, the light went down on earth. I heard the angels sing and I had a beer passion. I finally understood. And ever since I've been really interested in craft beer in general, um, also the foreign craft beers. I was very early on, I think one of the first people in Belgium to really do the foreign craft beers because I think there's so much interesting stuff there. Uh, in Belgium at the time, we did mostly triple, double, quadruple, you know, industrial lager. While in the other countries, you, you could already drink IPAs, Imperial Stouts, Bourbon Barrel Aged, Barley Wines, whatever you want. Uh, it's only later, later, sorry, when I became a beer bartender that I studied the Belgian beers as well. So I started a whole different way than everybody else did. I came down from, you know, the American very hard to get whale beers, as we call them, to the Belgian saisons. And now I appreciate everything. So yeah. about what uh, year are we talking now, the beginning of your uh, beer trip? I always say that 2012 is my beginning year. Because then I started out on Raid Beer, which is one of those rating uh, sites or apps, as you say. Um, and that's when I really went full on into beer. So before that, I did drink some beers, obviously. I did try some beers. Uh, but I consider 2012 as my beginning year. You also, I remember you did a, a special beer bets for your so many checked in on, uh, I think, <laughs> uh, Untapped or something. Can you tell me a bit about no, that I'm and how you contacted those people? I'm not really big on Untapped, to be honest. I uh, have the app, but I only have like, I don't even know, 300 beers checked in there because I don't really love the medium myself for what I'm uh, trying to do with beers. So I was very active on Ray Beer, uh, which was much more about what are you tasting, how are you perceiving it, mouthfeel, flavor, aftertaste, everything. And you write like a specific review of each beer. Uh, that's work that I'm continuing currently on Brewer. Brewer is the new medium since Raid Beer got bought over by AB InBev and we don't want to sponsor that. Um, anyway, on the Raid Beer, it's tradition if you reach 10,000 reviews that a brewery makes a beer for you. Okay, um, I didn't know And that. I had a yeah, hard cool. time. Okay. <laughs> I had a very hard time as a bartender, as a beer passionate person that loves many styles, to select one brewery or one style even. So I came up with this crazy idea and I have them daily, believe me, <laughs> to uh, do 10 beers by 10 different breweries in 10 different styles. I talked it over with my boss, the owner of Beer Lovers Bar, and he immediately said, let's do it. So we contacted, well, I contacted uh, 10 different breweries to make 10 different styles of beer. So I paired them each with a style I think they do really, really well. Um, and most of them actually said yes straight from the beginning. Uh, some other ones were a bit more trouble because they were just moving equipment or, you know, they were full, fully booked. And actually, I helped brewing most of the beers myself. So 
that was fun. <laughs> uh, I got to decide what ingredients we would use, what the beer would turn out to be like. Um, I got to name the beers, so I named them all after songs I like, metal songs, so 10 different bands, 10 different songs. Um, so yeah, it was a big party. And then as a secret kind of surprise for the attendees, people, I uh, had one mead also made by Superstition uh, from Arizona in America. So I was very, very honored that they wanted to do that for me as well. Uh, only 300 bottles made and most of them were for Belgium, so very exclusive. We had the only keg in the world, so <laughs> it was expensive, but so worth it. All right, I even found here, if I'm correctly, and it comes through, I even found here the article in the Belgium local newspaper. <laughs> and look yes, whose yes. photo. <laughs> cool. <laughs> in the only uh, days. Yeah, and even the local uh, newspaper started to write about this. Uh, yeah? yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So you mentioned already um, the Brewer, Brewer, the app, the new application. Yes. Let's also take a look at that. Um, it's it's not an app yet um, because Brewer is very very new and it's completely made by volunteers. So nobody has made one single cent uh, from it. But we do pay for data storage and stuff like that. Um, the first thing we want to do with Brewer um, is to make an, an, an application, you can say, actually it's more a website right now, uh, that does the nice things that Raidbeer did offer before they were taken over by ABMF. And we want to combine it with the good things about Untapped, like uh, user friendliness, uh, like volume of people. That's what we dream about. Uh, but there's a lot of work that needs to be done, as you can imagine, with a site like that. Uh, it's only online since August. So we have a whole list of things that we need to do and making an app isn't the priority right now because we first want to get enough content, we first want to get enough users, uh, we first want to update our information enough on all beers, brewers, places, it's a terrible lot of work. Um, and an app will probably be planned for September, but I'm not the owner, I'm not the guy that gets to decide all of that, so we'll see, we'll see how it works out, but we're working a lot for it. As so basically your when... Screen, when Raidbeer got bought by uh, Abimbev, you told me that a lot of uh, people who are active in the scene were deleting their content on purpose and in order to uh, support this new uh, initiative. So unfortunately, uh, Raidbeer did um, not allow users to delete their content. Uh, even though it's self-created content, so we are uh, a bit in a struggle to realize if it's uh, legal or not. But anyway, they don't allow it. Uh, they even go as far as they can put back ratings that you manually delete. But nobody's going to manually delete 10,000 beer ratings. That's a lot of work and, I mean, it's not going to change much. So most of us just stopped rating on Raidbeer, uh, stopped using the platform throughout. Um, the nice thing about Brewer is that you can also upload your ratings previously given on both Raidbeer or Beer Advocate or even Untapped. So you can really replace all your ratings. That's why we, as you can see in your screen already, are over 700,000 reviews. Um, there's no way we would have drank that <laughs> since August. So it's definitely a lot of older content that we moved over uh, along with our accounts. So our accounts do still exist on Raidbeer. They're just not very active anymore, if any are active. Yeah, okay, so uh, Brewer is new since uh, 2019 in August, and this is then the soft launch. Yes. Very cool. Um, and you're like a moderator on there? and I'm a moderator, yeah. So I collect information about beers, breweries, places, try to get everything updated. But as you will see, when you surf on Brewer, there's still a lot of content that needs to be added. Um, you can imagine that 200,000 uh, 200, plus beers is a lot of work if you need to manually update it with pictures, alcohol content, IBU, commercial description, you name it. That doesn't leave us even the breweries, uh, the double entries. When you get check-ins from Untapped and ratings from Raidbeer and you merge them into the site, sometimes they're misspelled, differently spelled. And it creates double entries, which we also need to merge together. So it's a project that will take many, many years before it's even close to being fulfilled. But 
if somebody watching this wants to see what a, a good page would look like, I would advise you to surf to Rodenbach on Broover because that's a page I fully did. So that place, that page is really the example of what Broover should be for all peers and all places. Yeah, cool, cool. Um, and also, you're very active in uh, certification. You're—I don't know your exact status, um, but <laughs> what did you what, what did you do of uh, certification programs? And uh, to see that your uh, tasting skills are very up to date. So I'm a recognized PJCP judge, which isn't the terribly highest rank in the in the ranking, but. It is very hard as a Belgian person to move up to the ranking because currently when I want to move up, I need to get judging points, which um, does not happen in Belgium. So you need to judge at an actual competition organized by BJCP and they don't really happen in Belgium currently. And for me, it's not technically possible at the moment to go to all those countries to collect enough points to move a rank up. Um, so it's definitely not a priority for me. Uh, in terms of Cicerone, I'm currently a certified Cicerone, one of the, uh, I think we're with eight now in Belgium. And I do want to move up to the third level, which is advanced Cicerone. Uh, but it will take some study and it will take some money and time off to uh, be able to do the exam because they're expensive and they're very hard. So if you fail, you lose a lot of money, time and yeah, will it to live. <laughs> Yeah. Um, also, you did a trip to America. Was that something to do with uh, the beer judging and tasting, or was that purely uh, being there and doing the beer rockstar thing? <laughs> um, I've been a few times to America, so I've been. Um, the last trip was last month, was to uh, Florida, and that was basically to visit some breweries, to do a beer festival or three. <laughs> um, Last year I also went to Florida and then I did manage to give some lectures there about beer. So on Belgian beer styles and on Lambic specifically. Um, so that was very fun. Unfortunately this year it didn't work out because of shortage of time and stuff like that. I've never been to a judging competition in America because like I said it's really expensive to, to go to a place like that. Um, if there was a competition at the time I'm actually in America I would definitely do it. But to go to America only for a competition is a bit over the top to me. Yeah, um, and currently you're um, bartending at uh, Beer Lovers Bar in Antwerp, and you also do your uh, series about beer tastings. What is the status about that? Last time I remembered you did some uh, pairing with cheese, so also doing the food side. Are there any new things coming up with a series about beer or things of beer lovers that we really have to uh, keep noticing after this uh, crisis is gone. Well, a lot of plans unfortunately did fail. Um, they did get moved to a later date, that's unknown, or they did cancel throughout, um, which is a sad thing because um, the bars do get a few bucks for their month coverage that they need to close their business. But unfortunately, since I don't own a place, uh, I do not get that fee. So <laughs> currently I just lose a lot of yeah, business over the coronavirus, but then again, everybody is. Um, so in terms of the future, uh, there are definitely plans still on the table. Um, I just don't know when they will happen. Um, one of the things that I'm actually going to say in like a avant premiere on this vlog is that I am getting an own place to do the tastings soon. Unfortunately, also postponed by the coronavirus. So yeah, currently with a place that I cannot use. Um, but that's going to happen. There's also going to be some other interesting stuff. So I would definitely ask everybody, like, follow me on Facebook because that's the way you can help small businesses these days as well. Just follow them. And when I do an event and you come to the event, then I can get over this crisis as quickly as possible. Unfortunately, there's nothing much more we can do right now. Um, some bars are handing out gift certificates. I can also do that for my tastings. But um, yeah, not much more than that. Um, in terms of beer lovers bar, same story. Um, we cannot really plan anything right now because we don't know when we are able to open again. So the date currently still is 3rd of April, I believe, the final day of closure, but probably it's going to be expanded. So we don't know. Yeah, Definitely we're working on a lot of stuff behind the scenes. So just and follow us on Facebook. Yes, yes. Um, 
and also to talk a bit more um, as a bartender you are your master bartender what is um, experience wise what do you think will happen in the sector or if do you have any tips of people working in bars like um, diversify something or if people want to go more active in a beer scene that probably are not working in a, in a very beer oriented bar or what would you give those people away well uh, there's actually two parts of your question the the first part i cannot really answer because we've never been through a crisis like this i don't know how to deal with it probably my owner doesn't know how to deal with it but i didn't contact him i hope he has a plan um, he usually has. He's a bit better in that kind of thing than I am. Um, in terms of the regular business as usual, um, I would definitely say that it's worth checking out beer, specialty beer, but also the way you serve specialty beer. Because what we see now is a lot of increase in terms of specialty beers being offered in bars. But unfortunately, that doesn't always go hand in hand with the quality of service. Um, when I did, an, an, um, how do you say that? When I did a questionnaire uh, on Facebook, turns out that 100% of the people, so I'm not even rounding this number up, 100% of the people got served a beer in their life that was wrong. And by wrong, we mean tap lines that aren't cleaned, bottles that are out of date uh, when they shouldn't be, obviously not talking about vintage beers here. Um, so it's, it's really a pity that we as a beer country allow that to happen. It should be close to zero. But it's not. It's a uh, unfortunately, you can sell as good beer as you want. But if you don't know what you're serving, if you don't know how to serve it, it's not a good bar to me. Um, so I don't want to talk anybody down. But just I would advise every bartender to really, you know, it's your job. I expect a doctor to know what a cold is. Yeah, I course. expect a bartender to know how to clean your lines. I expect a bartender to know how to pour a beer. And I expect a bartender to be able to give a minimum of information when I ask him about a certain beer. Um, unfortunately, we have a long way to go. And that's one of the goals that Cities About Beer has, uh, to like spread the information more, spread knowledge more, and make people more aware. I'm also working on the other side. I'm also telling people all the time, like if you have a beer that's faulty, like learn your off flavors, even as a, as a, a, a regular person yeah, that's not sure. working in the industry. If you have a beer that's not okay, you should be able to tell why it's not okay and go in discussion, friendly discussion, with the staff and say like, dude, sorry, but I think your lines might not be clean because I have diacetyl in my beer. Uh, if you don't know what diacetyl is, how are you going to make that complaint? You're just going to think it's a bad beer, which is bad for the brewery, which is bad for the bar because you're not drinking a second one, and which is bad for you because you just paid for a beer you didn't like and you shouldn't have paid for it because it's not served correctly. Um, this can all be solved if you and the bartender know what diacetyl is. First of all, it shouldn't happen. It shouldn't reach the customer. But if it does, you can have a discussion about it and it can be solved. You might get a replacement drink. You might get a, get a new fill of a, a new keg with a clean line. Or you might get not a solution at all. And then you know, I shouldn't sponsor this bar anymore. I should go to a bar that does care about the quality of the product. So I think there's a lot of work and the work... Uh, is much more than just getting better beers in bars because a lot of bars already have quite good beers maybe not their whole range but they will have one or two nice beers usually uh, it's just a matter of how you serve them don't even get me started on dirty glassware and <laughs> all that kind of stuff yeah. um, also a question do you think is there a definition for craft beer and if yes what should it be uh, there is a definition. Uh, the definition is from America, unfortunately, because craft beer uh, is a term made in America. Um, it's basically the, the two biggest factors is that you have to be independent. Uh, so stuff like Goose Island, that are usually trying to sell their beers as craft beer, is not craft beer because they're owned by ABMF, same owners as Leffe, Schipler, Stella. Um, the second is that you have to be small. And small is a very... You know, <laughs> big term in their case. Uh, it's basically the size of um, the, the Boston Beer Company, who makes Samuel Adams. Yeah, that's right, Samuel Adams. Um, so as soon as they grow, the, the maximum capacity of a craft beer brewer grows. And to put that into context, in Belgium, Duvel would be a craft beer brewery because they're still small to American standards. So I really don't 
agree with that term completely. For me, craft beer, and that's just personally speaking, that's not official. Uh, for me, craft beer is beers that are more about the quality than the quantity. And beers that are more about the quantity than the quality are industrial beers. That's just my opinion. But you can be a small brewery making 100 liters and making, you know, a shitty beer for a high price, trying to get rich as fast as possible. Sorry, I think you're industrial beer. You yeah, can be so a brewer there's also that's uh, gigantic. a factor of being having honest ingredients and be transparent also with what you do with your Absolutely. beer, like let's that's... say colorings and extra flavors in that. Is that something you would be like people are more transparent in if you positioning yourself as a craft brewer? Well, not a lot of brewers will give their whole range of recipe um, for free away, you know, like the whole list of ingredients. No, it really does that. There's a few exceptions, but it's not really logical for a brewery to do that always. There is a big difference to me again, that's personally, uh, whether you add ingredients to make the beer cheaper, say corn, say colorants, say extracts, or you add beers, uh, you add ingredients for flavorings, say uh, peanuts, say hazelnuts, say vanilla, say cacao. Um, there's definitely a big overlap in those, I, I realize, but same, like if, if you do it in priority to save up money and you want to make more money off your beer, everybody needs to make money. So there's a very thin line, I realize, but if you solely do it for the money, then I don't think it's a good thing. Of course, your money financial status has to be exactly right as otherwise you cannot sustain a business but i think quality should come first in a real yeah, coffee brewery true, and if true, true. that quality uh, demands you to add rice for more drinkability then rice can be a good thing if you add rice because you want to get sell more beers to people like jupiter does um i don't know if there's actually rice in there but that would be a good example uh, they need to get the flavor as low as possible so people drink more beer but getting the flavor as low as possible isn't quality to me that's industrial to me so yes, it's yes. it's a very thin line all right um to round it up uh final question what beer are you gonna drink today i'm actually drinking a beer already um that's uh, a beer by tal poppy because in the current corona crisis it's all right bad lighting okay nobody can see that um, look it up. Lemons to the Sea by Tal Poppy from Kontig. Because as we all realize these days, you should drink local, small, independent breweries because they are the ones that are going to struggle with the corona crisis. So try and drink For local sure. beers. And it's just my luck that the beer is actually quite good. <laughs> so that's definitely not a punishment. All right, uh, Dylan, uh, we're going to top it off here. Eh? Um, wish you all the best. And uh, when this lockdown is finished, um, I'm going to catch a beer with you as soon as possible. Absolutely. Absolutely. See, ya. See you. Cheers.